Welcome to CRCC competition. It's great to be here. We're happy to talk to you all. There's a lot of people on. We're excited about the upcoming season. Uh, this is Trevor Pope on my right here. Um, my name is Graham Celine. We're going to talk to you today about the competition, how it works, give you the, the, the inside scoop for those of you that have been here before. Uh, thank you for joining. For those of you who, knew, who are new, we're excited to have you. With that said, let's kick off. So what is CRCC? And everybody's sitting there and saying, oh, now he's going to say it's an online competition where students have uh, uh, compete using a virtual robot. And that's all true. But primarily, CRCC is an opportunity to make waves. It's an opportunity to do something completely different. Why? Well, CRCC is something that students love. They get involved. They get really excited about the competition. They like the competition. They like programming the robots. They like uh, succeeding uh, to, to, uh, to complete the missions. And so while they're doing that, we're getting STEM traction. We're teaching them the topics that we want them to learn, to, look, to live in this technology savvy uh, tech environment that, that they're going to uh, be in when they graduate from school and they go into careers. And so uh, we're, ex we're succeeding to do something. And most important, CRCC is a highly visible activity. It's an activity that students see a lot about. The teachers see what's going on, principals, administrators, and parents. Everybody sees this new activity taking place, and it is great. Everybody sees that we're making progress, and we're doing what we talk about, promoting STEM through the to the classroom and getting kids involved. And that's why CRCC is such a great success wherever we run it. So the Cyber Robotics Coding Competition, to clarify, is run by the Intellitech STEM and CTE Education Foundation, which is the 5013C3, a nonprofit organization that uh, organizes and runs the competition. Uh, but you hear a lot about Intellitech and Coder Z. Well, Coder Z is the platform. Coder Z is the software uh, that we use to run the platform. Uh, Coder Z is available in two forms the learn format, which is used in classrooms with curriculum, and the compete format, which is what we use at ISEF in the CRCC competition. Um, Intellitech is the parent company of uh, this organization, and so that's why their name appears in a lot of different places as well. But we're, with those two partners, we have tens, if not hundreds of other partners, and this is just a group of them that were very involved in the 2018 competition. These are both schools that hosted uh, at, uh, finals. These are organizations that promoted the competition, helped us get to students, uh, whether it be departments of education, whether it be informal organizations, whether it be support organizations, uh, businesses, uh, just across the board, we had a great group of people last year who helped us uh, organize the, and, and run this competition around the country. Uh, that number is growing. And so we're going to have to use two slides next year when we talk about our participating partners. But it's really important. They've done a lot to help us uh, make this su successful. And uh, if you uh, are part of these organizations, thank you. The most important thanks goes to you, the teachers, because CRCC doesn't happen unless we get the commitment and the dedication that you guys have uh, to bring your students and to promote STEM. It's a great opportunity to promote STEM in a school, but without the teachers, we can't do this. So take advantage of the opportunity, motivate the students, guide them, encourage them, be the champions for your students. And that way we'll have a fantastic and successful competition. And most important, spread the word. Tell other teachers, tell other schools, tell administrators, get your district involved, invite them to see what's happening in the classroom, invite them to see the finals. Uh, the, the, the more exposure that you get for this competition, the easier and the better it will be to get your students excited and to get uh, this to be a real success in your state. And I just wanted to share some of the statistics of the success as we move into this new year, because these are the targets that we're trying to beat. This to me is fantastic. 66% of the teachers who brought classes into the competition said they had no experience teaching coding. And that tells us about the low floor, high ceiling capacity of this uh, uh, 
competition where students and teachers with no coding experience started off at the beginning, went through, uh, and over 20% of the, the, the students and teachers completed all the missions in the, uh, the three different phases of the competition. Those teachers brought in 45,000 students in the US. 45,000 students took part in the competition last year. We had 26 states involved in the competition last year. 615 schools. Of those 615, 27 said they were charter schools, 25 were just clubs, 51 were independent schools, 15 magnet schools, and 431 public schools. So we had a spattering of school of, of, of a representation from just about every sector out there. Another fun fact, the most, most popular name of all the teachers was Michelle. There were 16 Michelle teachers, so if you're a Michelle, you're in the majority. If not, work on getting some more people with your name. But some other interesting statistics. If we asked about robotics, 34% of the schools said they had a robotics class or club, uh, uh, class. 35% they did not. 31% had, had an after school program. The same with coding, 34, 35, and 31. Computer science, we had more. We had 55% of the schools that said they had a computer science program and 38% said they didn't. We're trying to change that. Hopefully those classes now will say that they do have some program for coding, robotics, and computer science. If you look at those school breakdowns again, we had 23% urban, 45% uh, uh, suburban, 30% rural. We had a lot of small schools and it's great to have those schools in the competition. Uh, and so if, you want to, if you're in one of those categories, grow the number. But we have to look at this and say, well, why? This, what is the motivation behind the, uh, uh, the ISAF, organization, ISAF Foundation in arranging, in setting up and, and, and running this, uh, this competition? Well, if you look at the, the values that, that, that ISAF and the CRCC promote, it, it's exactly what we saw in the results. We teach real life skills. We teach technology literacy. We wanna take students that have a chance and students who may never have a chance to see this type of technology or have exposure to this type of technology and give them an opportunity to see what coding is all about and to become proficient, but also taste it. See if this might be something that they could, would be interested in their careers going forward. ISAF promotes equity, making coding and robotics available to all. And we reward the schools that have the highest participation. We look to, to grow diversity, grow the number of girls in, 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 in the competition, and reward schools that have a higher participation of girls. Our objective is to make this inclusive. All schools, all students, in class, at home, and the fact that you don't have to travel, you don't have to fundraise, you don't need any special equipment. It's simple and accessible event, mainly online and only in the, in the finals is an in-person event, makes it very easy to get as many schools and as many students as possible involved. The nice thing about it and what we, we look at from an ISAF point of view is how can we measure? Are we seeing results? And so now as we move into the, uh, the third year of the second uh, major season of the uh, uh, CRCC, we're looking at the, the, the results, at the measurements, at the, the growth of, of STEM in schools, and we're able to see how the competition is succeeding and what it's doing uh, for the schools that get involved. Most, uh, uh, last but not least, we promote excellence. We want inclusiveness, we reward performance, but we want to help students achieve academic and personal excellence in STEM. We want them to be able to go forward and find careers that they will excel in, that they will do well in, and that they can be a, a huge uh, contributor to society. What comes out of that is, what does it mean to win the cyber robotics coding competition? Well, winning is not only about points. It's really important for us to stress that. We don't just look and see who had the highest number of points and say, that's it, they're the winners, they take the big prize. They will because they've invested. But in the end, the scoring across the competition is highly weighted on participation. Classes and schools with the most students 
and who complete the most missions will be at the top of the leaderboard. We encourage teaming, we encourage mentoring, we promote that the students work together. This way, they'll all learn, they'll all get the most out of the, the, the competition. The student and school win when they get the most students involved. And that's what we stress and that's what we'd like you guys to focus on to do. CLC has registration fees. Uh, for those of you who were in the previous competitions, you'll, be, you'll know that this is a change, uh, but it's important for, to understand why. The fees help fund the program. We have the platform, five, uh, this, the code is e that we, we need to adapt, we need to develop new uh, missions every year, we need to uh, have a support organization and administration to manage the registration and the, uh, uh, communicate with teachers across the board. We send out welcome packs to, to you guys. We market the competition, so we'll get more and more uh, students involved. We run the finals events around the country. We provide awards and so much more. So the, the registration fees that we charge are there to help us fund the program, to help us uh, um, make this successful and to, to, to keep this uh, continuing for many years to come. Uh, this year, the registration fees are $550 for a school which is up to 1,000 students, uh, up to 200, $250 for a classroom. So for a classroom, it's less than $7 a student. Um, for those of you that are having a challenge finding that, that, that funding, uh, we encourage you to look at state grants. There are a lot of state grants that are open and available for competitions, for robotics competitions, and this is considered a robotics competition. And so many of the teachers out there that have looked at those grants have found the opportunity and, and, and there is money available. Uh, turn to your parents and PTO contributions. We told the story about a teacher that stood up in front of her, her PTO and told them that she wanted to bring the kids. She got a check the next day in the mail from one of the parents. Uh, you can do some volunteer funding, get your students out there to do the, the, the typical uh, bake sale car wash, easy way to bring up the, the, the cash. Turn to local businesses, look at, at, at the local software company or the local robotics company or the local factory that uses robotics and tell them what you're doing and see if they'll help you. And then of course, there's a lot of crowdfunding sources that you guys are probably more familiar with than I am uh, that can help you uh, raise some money to get your students involved. Get the school involved, it makes it a lot easier if everyone in the school is involved because the cost per student really goes down to a very low amount. How can you help expand CRCC? Because as we said, the more people that get involved, the more exciting and the more uh, uh, challenging this competition is gonna be. You want other schools and other classes in your region to be involved. So tell other teachers, get your whole school engaged. Challenge your colleagues to a competition. My class is gonna do better than your class. Share the experience, tell everyone about it, and we'll get more and more people involved. And the more people that, we, that get involved, the more successful the CRCC is going to be in your state and in your school. How do you motivate the students? Well, uh, your job's real simple throughout this competition. Keep the students involved and coding. They don't have to put in a lot of time. Trevor will go into more detail about that in a bit. But keeping them involved, letting them see the success that they're having in the competition is really important. And that's really what you need to do. How can you do that? Well. First, introduce them to Cyber Cyril. Cyril is our, our logo and our mascot, and we use him a lot to motivate and, 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 and identify participants. We've seen schools make t-shirts, we've seen schools make little badges, we've seen schools just uh, put him up on the board, uh, on, on, on slides, in the classroom, uh, and, and he really helps. Share, follow us on social media, share your class experience on social media, tell the story to colleagues, friends, family, students, and get them involved. It's never too late to join. The registration remains open until the qualifiers, which is uh, uh, November 1st. Um, the competition will start early. We'll talk about the schedule. Get people involved, get them in, in there. Uh, talk about who are the winners. This is the, the states that, uh, uh, the 10 states that held face-to-face -face finals. And you can see the schools that were up there and there were winners. Uh, these are the pictures. And you can see the, the, the excitement and the fun on the faces of these students that won prizes, certificates, uh, uh, awards at the competition, and, and, and how satisfying it was for them to 
get up on the stage and win that award for their school. Last year we, we had uh, 10 face-to-face -face finals. We're starting with the same number. This year we have 34 states registered so far. And so we're looking to expand the number of face-to-face -face finals. We held the state final based on the number of schools that are involved and we need a sponsor location. So if you're in one of those states that isn't listed as having a face-to-face -face final right now, introduce us to your STEM champion in your state. Introduce us to somebody who's really making a difference or wants to make a difference, an organization, a person in the DOE, a, somebody who's uh, focusing on, on uh, uh, STEM education at one of the universities or colleges, and we'll work with them and see if we can get that all together and, and, and set up a competition in your state. We want to hold finals competitions in all 52 states. Um, right now, we, we, we're at 10 and we're really looking to grow that. So give us the names and we will do that. Social media is huge. It's part of what your student, where your students are said, where your community will become aware of what you're doing with CRCC and it helps boost the, the competitive spirit. Uh, our hashtag is CRCC for all. Uh, our uh, uh, Different uh, social outlets are all at CRCC for all. Go online and share. This is some of the stuff that we did last year. And here you can see Hello, some guys. videos. Please, please tell us about yourselves. My name is Miguel Castro. I'm an eighth grade and I'm a tech assistant here at Wedgwood. Those were all created by schools, by all these hundreds of students that you can see in this picture that went out and created their own videos during the best video week. And they sent those in. And those students, the, the, the school that, that had the best video, won t-shirts that were sent to them so that they could uh, gear up and, and have more swag for the competition. And, and, and it was a great success. So get your, get, get your students involved, create posts. Uh, here's some other posts you can see. This was uh, on the top left, ready, set, go. Uh, different uh, pictures of students having fun and doing CRCC. At the bottom, we have somebody actually cut out our logo into a watermelon. And, you know, that's the kind of thing that, that's going to help the students really enjoy this and get motivated and take part. Uh, here's some more pictures that you can see. Uh, the one that I really like is this. Uh, we, last year, we had this poster where teams could update every day um, all their stats in the classroom, and we'll, we'll be sending these out again. Uh, and here you can see different pictures that, that, that teachers posted onto social media of where they were with the with their class and how the kids were doing in the competition. And, the, and this really keeps the kids engaged and motivated. So again, on Twitter, at CRCC for all, on Facebook and on Instagram, share, post pictures, get us out there and you will see that there will, it'll be beneficial because this will help the kids keep motivated and engaged. Right now I pass off to Trevor. Trevor's our competition master, and Trevor's going to tell us more about the competition and how it runs. Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us today for this kickoff and orientation webinar for the Cyber Robotics Coding Competition, CRCC. My name is Trevor Pope. I work for the Intellitech STEM and CTE Education Foundation, and I am the CRCC competition master. I am excited by the turnout of interest for this competition. This is the third year we're putting on a CRCC. It's great to see a lot of returning schools. Welcome back. And it's great to see so many new schools interested in participating in this year's event. Which cat whichever category you fall under, I think it's a ter terrific opportunity for your school, your students, and you. Registration forms have been submitted from a diverse group of teachers with and without coding or robotics experience. Some of you have done Scratch, Hour of Code, First, the X. And this is really terrific, and it's just what CRCC was designed for, teachers and students with and without experience. Here's what I'd like to cover this afternoon. I'm gonna talk about what is CRCC, what to expect the next few weeks, and what it will look like for your students and you, the finals event, as well as resources and support that's available to you during these six weeks. Feel free to post questions via the, the questions or chat field in your GoToWebinar screen. I'll leave some time at the end to address these questions. 
Coder Z, you'll hear the word or see Coder Z quite a bit. Coder Z is an online learning platform where students learn STEM by coding virtual 3D robots. The competition platform is licensed from Coder Z and a lot of the resources like tutorials are done by the Coder Z team. New features in Coder Z for the CRCC are we are offering the ability for multiple teachers per school. Uh, this will allow you and fellow teachers to all participate in CRCC, each having your own individual account under one master school. Uh, we are going to incorporate new missions as part of this event so that it does not give any past participants an advantage as part of the various stages. Uh, we are also going to give you the opportunity to create an in-school finals event. This will allow you to create a kind of end the season with an in-school finals before an actual live in-person finals takes place. And we are going to incorporate special event challenges at random intervals during the, the various stages of CRCC. So it should be, should be a lot of fun, pretty exciting. Let me tell you about CRCC and why. CRCC was created to provide an opportunity for more students and teachers to have access to opportunities to learn to code and code for robo robotics using virtual robots. We want to help entire schools to engage in a multi-week learning to code experience and reach the other 99%. Coder Z is based in Blockly, a forgiving and easy to learn programming tool with Java as the underlying code. Gamified mission-based learning makes coding robots engaging, competitive, and fun. Students and teachers can go at the appropriate pace based on their experience level or skill. No hardware is needed. By removing hardware and robots from the equation, the opportunity becomes not only less costly, but something more students can do in parallel. There's no waiting. And it's also easier for educators now that you don't have to worry about breakage, parts, inventory control, and much less counter space is needed. Coder Z is cloud-based. Students can engage during class, study periods, after school, or home, anywhere there's an internet connection. We do this through a simulator, and here it is. This is what your students and you will see the first time you log in. These are getting started missions. It will be an introduction to get you acclimated. Let me click on mission three. I will open that up and take a look at this particular mission. First, you'll notice these pop-up tutorials. These are guided tutorials and walkthroughs to help you and your students through the missions. As I click next, it gives me in information on how to solve the mission and what I need to do next. On the right-hand side of the screen is our simulation. Your objective is to write code to drive the robot to the target. Collecting points, these green objects are batteries along the way. Any red objects you see or bump into are bad, they will take away points. Any green objects are good, they will add points to your score. The robot is incorporated with a series of sensors on it. On the front of the robot, you can see here this plus sign is a touch sensor. As it bumps into the wall, that touch sensor will get depressed. Uh, these eyes here on the very front is an ultrasonic sensor. Uh, it works similar to a bat's radar where it sends out a pulse. That pulse hits an object, hits a wall in front of it, bounces back to the other sensor and calculates a distance the robot is away from the wall. Um, this item here is a color sensor, which detects the color of the ground. We use that incorporate to, to incorporate ground colors, lines, various objects on the floor that the robot needs to detect. And on the back here is a gyroscopic sensor. This determines the angle of the robot, whether it's going at, at a straight zero degrees, or you can actually tell it to, the gyro to turn 90 degrees, turn at a specific angle using this gyro sensor. Uh, you and your students will get to learn how to use all of these sensors as we progress. This icon here will allow show a heads up display on the screen and show the states of the various sensors on the robot. We also offer a manual control, which is this icon here, which will allow you to manually drive the robot back and forth. 
Um, this again gives you a feel for an understanding how you want to write your code. What you want to do, drive forward, hit this object, the touch sensor becomes true. Here you can then make a right hand turn and continue on with your code. Um, Coder Z won't actually let you solve this mission using the navigation, the manual control. This is only to help you give you a guide for how you want to write your code. You actually need to solve the code by writing blocks or writing code here on the left hand side of the screen. All of our code is hidden in these color coded menus. Uh, you have a full menu list of menu commands, including motors, sensors, control, and then more advanced functions with variables, data, and various utilities. To code, it's a matter of opening up this menu, clicking and dragging the code that you want. You'll notice this is grayed out. As I snap this together or bring this closer to the actual program start block, you'll see that little yellow V pop up and I can snap that block right into the code. It's fun, it's engaging, very easy to, to use. Here I can also set a steering, set a duration, add these various parameters. Uh, if I wanted to add my code, I wanted to include those in my code. Um, As I write that code, this icon here will show me the Java, the underlying code behind this. This is a live dynamic window. And if you look at this value here, 100%, as I change this drive power, that actually changes here in real time. Our objective is for the students to understand this Java and get a feel for how the Java works by starting off with this Blockly and then eventually migrating into a pure Java dynamic environment. Uh, they will not use any Java-based missions during the CRCC. Everything is done in a blocky-based environment. Uh, but here's my code to drive forward. I'm going to wait until this touch sensor is true, wait until I hit the wall. I'm then going to make a turn. Add a duration. Add a steering, which is a ratio of power from one wheel to the other. To run my code, it's this icon here. This will run the simulation. You can see the code is highlighted as it's running. And there's my code. Now, I didn't actually tell it to make a complete turn here and continue on to the target, uh, but you and your students will understand how to do this as you get through and com complete finalize those missions. So pretty straightforward, pretty fun, pretty engaging. Let me tell you a little bit about uh, CRCC, uh, where we have been and what you're becoming a part of. In the fall of 2017, we started off with a pilot here in New Hampshire with 2,600 students in a statewide pilot event. In the spring of 2018, we had a competition in Israel with over 16,000 students. And in the fall of 2018, we had a competition in Vietnam with over 30,000 students involved. The fall 2018 CRCC event here in the US was our biggest event to date. We had registration from almost 600 schools. We had almost 40,000 registered students in 26 different states. We had 10 CRCC state final events and, and an impressive total outreach to over 100,000 students since inception in 2017. Now I'm going to start explaining the phases of the competition and what to expect but before I do, our R&D team insists that I outline the system requirements so we're all clear. Uh, we rec recommend a 64-bit processor, at least four gig of man RAM, we prefer eight gig, internet access, and the latest version of a Chrome browser. To update Chrome, you can just go to Chrome settings help and check what version you have. It'll actually show you whether it's updated or not. Now, onto the phases of the competition. Uh, mark your calendars with these important dates regarding the phases of CRCC. 
These are also posted on the gocoderz.com website, so you don't have to have a pencil and notepad handy. Uh, they are available on the website. Number one is this boot camp open to students. This is when we're launching to students. This is where we'll make Coder Z available to students, and they'll be able to open up that boot camp and start their training missions. And then we open the competition phase, where we then migrate into qualifiers. During these three phases of the competition, we will offer various pop-up special event challenges. Uh, these will be themed challenges for potentially any holidays that may fall in there, uh, hint, hint, wink, wink, um, or any kind of random challenges we, uh, our marketing team throws out along the way. The CRC team will analyze state, school, class, and individual results, and we will extend invitations to schools that perform well to a live in-person finals events. We are offering an in-school finals event. This is an optional event for schools to hold. Here you can have a in-school in finals to determine your best students. Getting started and boot camp. The boot camp missions are guided and aim to introduce novice users to the concept of coding robots. While these guides do not go into details and theory as our curriculum does, they provide a gamified way of getting the hang of things, enough to create and stimulate interest in basic understanding of coding. Bootcamp includes over 40 missions, requires no previous knowledge, and should take 48 hours for a novice to complete. During the two weeks, students should be able to allocate 30 to 45 minutes every other day to complete in time. It's not a must to complete all missions, but this bootcamp with walkthroughs and guided tutorials is the best way to learn and prepare for the next part, so make use of it while it's available. Dedicate class time. Encourage students to continue during free time at school or at home. Students will learn basic navigation, sensors, including the gyroscopic sensor, touch sensor, ultrasonic sensor, and color sensor, as well as intermediate coding for loops, conditions, and variables. And they will score, score points up to 100 points for each mission they complete. Uh, once boot camp is unlocked, the mission center will look very similar to this screen here. As students make progress and complete missions, they will see a check mark next to each completed mission and their individual score per mission. If a mission is not complete, they will not see the check mark or their score. A teacher will be able to see a class scoreboard by clicking on this graph icon here. This allows your, the teacher to compare various classes that you have set up, as well as students individual, or as well as the class individual score. To, clicking on the class name will open up the list of students in that class and show you how well each student has performed the number of missions they've completed, and their average number of attempts. Clicking on My Classes here will show individual student performance, during the various phases of the competition, and you'll be able to see individual student heat maps showing their results per mission with green, yellow, or red squares next to the student name. A green square means the student has done very well. A yellow square means the, they have done average, and a red square means they have done poorly. Clicking on the individual student name will show individual results. For that student, here I can see this student has scored five missions in the green, one mission in the yellow, two missions in the red. You will also be able to click on a link on this scoreboard page on the upper right hand side that says competition leaderboard. These aren't active yet, but when they are, you'll see competition leaderboard here. And this will show how your class is doing compared to other schools and other classes in your state. Bootcamp objectives. All of these objectives are important to us. The ones we want to focus on during boot camp are inclusiveness and female participation. During boot camp, we evaluate your overall score, inclusiveness, and diversity, 
and you can earn in, an invitation to your state finals awards or both based on these criteria. We want as many students in your school actively, actively participating as possible. That's the entire point of CRCC. On Monday, we will unlock the competition phase of CRCC. Bootcamp will remain open as a resource and students can still attempt missions. However, your state leaderboards will be locked and any updated scores will not be added to the state leaderboard results. The objective of the competition phase is to continue completing online missions. Many of these missions will still have guided tutorials and walkthroughs and we anticipate a student to finish in a three to six hour window. Here we will migrate into the qualifier phase. These missions are brand new to CRCC and have never been seen before. Unlike the boot camp and competition stages, qualifiers have no walkthrough guides and contain minimal tips and tricks. Students will need to apply the knowledge they've learned so far to complete these challenges. There are fewer challenges in this stage, but each qualifier challenge is longer, more complicated, and has more points available per challenge. Each qualifier challenge has more points available than the competition missions, and your student scores will be added to their qualifier score for an overall class total. So the qualifier stage will be added to the competition stage for an overall total of both stages together. We recommend students help each other either by setting up after school meetups or assigning students as mentors to other students who they can turn to for assistance. To complete all of these qualifier challenges, students should allocate three to six hours in total, about an hour each day, either in class or after school, that should be more than enough. And again, boot camp and competition stages will remain open during qualifiers, allowing students to com complete unfinished missions or use as a resource to look at saved projects, samples, and written code. Your state leaderboards will be locked, and any updated scores in boot camp and qualifiers will not be added to your state leaderboard results. Here we're only looking at scores from this qualifiers phase. Let's talk about the finals and how to reach them. A CRCC has partnered with a local college or school in your state to hold a live in-person finals event. Not all of the venues have been finalized, and you should keep an eye out on the GoCoderZ.com webpage for more information. Some of the criteria we look for are high participation in boot camp, high female participation in boot camp, high class scores during the competition and qualifier stage, and high individual scores during the competition and qualifier stage. Some incentive for you and your students um, for the finals, each student who attends the finals event will receive a CRCC t-shirt to wear with pride. We will recognize outstanding individual performance during the phases of the competition, and schools have the opportunity to earn awards for their overall performance during the CRCC, and we will offer bronze, silver, and gold plaques to the top three teams in attendance at the finals. It's really inspiring to see so many hosting venues offer monetary scholarships to individuals who perform extremely well. Imagine the pride and sense of accomplishment for a middle school student to earn their first college scholarship. <laughs> Invitations to, are based on the number of seats available at each finals venue and then proportionally distributed, distributed to schools based on school performance, class performance, or individual performance. The finals event will last approximately half a day and will consist of five to six total missions to challenge your students' coding ability. The finals will consist of brand new missions to ensure any returning schools or students do not have an unfair advantage. We ask that you create a two-person team to represent your school and prefer to see a co-ed team. So as a teacher, you're probably wondering, well, how do I determine which students should attend the finals? Here, we have included the option for a teacher to run an in-school finals event just for your school. This is a completely optional event where the teacher can schedule a school-wide finals event anytime during the window for all CRCC participants in your school to simultaneously compete. 
This is a great way to end your CRCC, CRCC season and allow us for an internal school competition to determine top classes and top performing students and unbiasedly determine students to represent your school in the state finals. The optional school finals would last between one and two hours. Over the next two slides are a number of support channels and resources that we have in place for you. For immediate classroom support, we have a call center and email. Don't be afraid to use them. You can also reach out and support a support ticket directly from the Coder C help widget. There's a little help icon on the bottom right hand side where you can click on for help, uh, search our fact or uh, send an email to our support team. This slide contains links and are not so useful in a webinar, but the post webinar PDF we send will have clickable links containing getting started articles, including first steps, how to set up your class, how to run a simulation, and how to write code. We also include links to our frequently asked questions and troubleshooting tips and tricks and our Coder Z YouTube, YouTube channel, which does have some, um, some fun promotional videos as well as some, uh, some solutions to some of the missions. And my final thoughts are please encourage students to join and participate. Help us spread the word about CRCC. Recruit additional teachers and others. Spread the word. Thanks for your time. I am also here as a resource and Graham can provide my contact information later in the, in the presentation. And as you can imagine, we have a whole support team behind us, which you'll get to meet virtually or at the state finals. Finally, thank you. May the code be with you. Thank you, Trevor. It was fantastic. Um, and we've had a bunch of questions as we've been going through this. And so uh, I am going to try and address those as quickly as possible. First of all, there was a question about timing and dates and can we sign it? What happens if we pay later? Uh, the, the, it's important to, to just clarify. There are a couple of ways to, to, to sign up and, and, and pay the registration fee. Online is easiest uh, using a credit card or PayPal. A lot of schools can do that. And so there's an option to request a quote. You get that quote, you put it through your purchasing department. If we receive the purchase order from your purchasing department, you're registered. So the payment may take a couple of days after that, and that's fine. Get those purchase orders in and we'll be able to get you online and part of the competition as quickly as possible. There was a question about the different types of accounts, school accounts, teacher accounts. I want to clarify. We, we do have individual accounts. So there are many homeschoolers or, or, or single students who are signing up and they'll be, they'll be put into virtual classes. We also have a class account and we have a school account. A class account is a single teacher with up to 35 students. Uh, that's good for clubs, uh, uh, smaller groups of students with a single administrator if you want teacher. When we talk about a school, a school can have multiple teachers. So a school, when a school signs up, we allocate a, a school org admin and the school org admin then invites different teachers. Each teacher has a class that will show up on the leaderboard. And that's a very important difference to what we had in 2018. We will have a school and a class leaderboard. So each class, you'll be able to filter and see the total for your school, high school number one, and you'll also be able to see each and every class within the high school against all the other classes in the state. So that's a big difference from previous years in that the scoring will be done on a class level. So somebody asked a question about it seems that a big school will have a, an advantage over a small school and the answer is no for a couple of reasons. One, because we're looking at the individual classes and we'll also look at the total for the school. But two, because that's what Trevor and I are going to be doing is we're going to look and make sure that everybody gets fair representation. One of the areas that, that, that is always problematic is small schools. Sometimes we have schools with a very low number of students in, the, in that age group, and they definitely can potentially be at a disadvantage. And so we will look at those specifically, and we will make sure that no school or student that puts in the effort and has good results is treated fairly and, take, and, and has an opportunity to get to the finals. No one should have a blatant advantage here. Uh, that's our objective. We'll talk in, in the upcoming webinars more about the actual scoring system and how it exactly works. And you'll see that there's a uh, weighting to the system 
and allows it to be as fair as possible across the board. Second question that we saw that came up was about curriculum. Somebody asked, can we, is there curriculum that the students can use before they get started in the boot camp on October 15th? And the answer is yes and no. Competition itself, CRCC does not include curriculum. Uh, it includes a lot of those hints and tips that Trevor showed, uh, guided, guidance as you get into the boot camp, but that will start on October 15th. Coda Z, the platform, does include curriculum. And so if you're interested in, in, in setting up and getting that curriculum before the competition starts, get in contact with us. Name's on the last slide and you'll be able to get that. Uh, and we will be able to look into that option for you and see if that, that'll work for you as well. Uh, Coda Z is, is a learning platform and so it comes with fairly extensive and sophisticated curriculum that can be used in the classroom uh, for your students to prepare. Uh, another question came up was on platforms. Uh, the first question was around Chromebooks. Does the system support Chromebooks? And the answer is absolutely, it does. As long as they have the minimum uh, technical requirements that Trevor put up earlier and the right amount of memory, which is probably the most important thing, uh, then yes, it will support Chrome. Uh, the Chromebooks will support that. Unfortunately, the next question is, do we support iPads? And the answer is no. Uh, there, we use a Chrome browser with specific plugins that are not supported on the iPad. And so unfortunately, the iPad is not going to work on the competition, uh, but any uh, other computer, including Mac computers that support uh, uh, Chrome browsers, uh, will work. Important to remember again and to, to, to stress, this can be done in class, in the club environment, in the library, or at home. Wherever a student has a computer and computer access, they can log into their CodeZ account and take part in the cyber robotics coding competition. Oh, one of the questions I noticed uh, that popped up is, uh, do students need experience in coding or knowledge of CoderZ in order to be to compete and be competitive in this program? Um, the answer is no. You need no formal coding experience to participate. Uh, we assume that students are coming in with no prior knowledge of either and guide students through both the software and coding through guided tutorials and walkthroughs. So they start with a bunch of getting started missions, sh shows them how to click blocks together, how the block works, how the menu structure works, where the various commands are. Uh, we also kind of offer walkthroughs of the CoderZ software, how to run a simulation uh, and how to do various things in the software. So again, we, we begin with no prior knowledge uh, or experience with CoderZ. The mission that I did open and, and, and practice with you guys or show you guys was one of the more intermediate level missions. I didn't want to start with one, with one of the basic ones. Um, I did kind of want to go into something that was a little bit more advanced. So uh, again, just to, to emphasize, we, do, um, we don't expect any prior knowledge of coding to be able to compete and be competitive in the CRCC. Another question that came up was related to the Lego Mindstorms. A, a number of people noticed and, and co commented that the robot in Coda Z is the Lego, looks like the Lego Mindstorm, but doesn't just look like, it is modeled on the Lego Mindstorms robot, and it is compatible with a, the, the uh, Lego Mindstorms robot. In Coda Z, the education platform, uh, you can integrate the program with the Lego Mindstorms in that you are able to take the, the code that you develop on the platform and download it to the Lego Mindstorms. That's not the case for the CRCC. In the competition platform, a version, competition version of the platform, that ability to download the code is locked. That's something that you can do if you use the full code as the learning platform. So yes, it looks like the Lego Mindstorm, it behaves like the Lego Mindstorm, the coding and, 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 and the operation is identical to the Lego Mindstorm. Um, and we'll be showing also some, some, uh, some new stuff going forward, uh, where we'll be doing some, some different uh, robots as well. But the, in, in the CRCC this season, what you're seeing is the Lego Mindstorms robot. I, I want to go back to this in-school finals because it's a, a new feature and we think something that will help schools a lot. It's an opportunity to enhance the experience of CRCC in general. The in-school finals can be run anytime after the qualifiers complete and before the finals happen. So there's a window of, uh, of about two weeks, uh, maybe a little more, where the school can pick any time and the school will be able to decide or the class will be able to decide when those finals will take place. 
it's an opportunity to get everyone involved, to motivate the, the, the school for the finals that will be coming up. And you can pick the finals representatives if you want through that. Uh, but you can also just create an in-school event where you can offer awards for the best class, the best student coder, the best new coder, the best girl coder, the best boy coder, whatever you want, you can create a whole bunch of different opportunities and for awards and, and awareness of the competition using that in-school finals. And we'll tell, talk more about that as we get closer to the end of the competition and this becomes relevant for everyone. And the fi as he said, the finals dates are not all final, as are not the venues not all final, uh, on the website, gocoderz.com, that's where we're keeping all the information updated and you'll be able to find the information there about the finals and the dates of the finals as we get to the point where these are uh, completed. Keep an eye on the website for updates and dates. If you're not getting emails from us, then you may have been a spam filter, so check and see that you've, you've added us to the, the uh, spam whitelist so that you're getting all the notifications share the information so that others can join is the link to the registration the more people we get the more fun it's going to be for all of us i just want to mention the next webinars we are having three webinars this year and this comes from the, the request from teachers to be able to, to to understand better before they head into this with their classrooms and so the next webinars are focused very much more on the uh, technicalities of code z uh, of the competition how to uh, solve missions, how to use different components in the platform so that you as, as the educators, you as the mentors uh, going in with students will be in a much better position to support and to uh, make sure that, that students uh, can finish the competition and can take part in the competition successfully. The first one will be next week at the same time and the second one will be in two weeks at the same time on Thursday. Next week we'll be talking mainly about uh, the organization, the administration of the webinar. So we'll be talking about the role of the, the org admin, setting up teachers, allocating student classes, the teacher's role of adding classes, how to enroll students, getting students enrolled and talk about that, the, the COPA, those type of pieces that, that make this safe and, and reliable for you to use in your classroom. Uh, we'll go into as much detail as necessary and we'll be able to answer any questions that people may have about how the competition uh, uh, operates. And we'll also look at the uh, scoring and any rules that, that are relevant for this competition at that point as well. And then in week three, we'll be doing very hands-on uh, training where we'll be looking at the navigation, at the sensors, at smart blocks, at duplicating, at repeat loops, and all the functions that are used within Coda Z and how those work so that, again, you'll be fresh in your mind and when, when you kick off the competition, a couple of weeks after that, you'll be able to uh, get that with your uh, students, or you'll be able to, to help your students with that. This is the most important uh, uh, slide. It's got all the contact details. Now, there are handouts in this webinar, which you can see in your interface, and you can download here uh, some brochures, a, a flyer that you can share with other uh, teachers, and the educator webinar PDF, which is all the slides that we just showed you, and on that PDF, you'll find this last slide, which has my name, Trevor's name, Randy's name, who's the guy who deals with the curriculum, uh, the links to the website, hashtags, everything you should need. And most important, if you have any questions, you know how to get hold of us. So send us an email. We'll respond as quickly as we can. We have this, the, the, the team here ready to go. And, and like, like we've said a number of times, we're really excited to kick off this new season and uh, we think it's going to be a fantastic event. Uh, we we're, appreciate you all joining us today. We appreciate you all signing up your classes. Get more classes involved. It's going to be so much fun if you have multiple classes in your school or if your colleagues that you know from the neighboring school or the, the, the next town over uh, have their classes involved and you can compete against them and have your students who uh, are putting a lot of effort into this, see the excitement of getting to the head of the, the list at the, the top of the leaderboard, it, it, there's nothing better. And then getting to the finals and taking part in that huge event, it's always fun. So we appreciate your time, and that's, that's a wrap. Thanks, everybody.
What is the Cyber Robotics Coding Competition? It's about really engaging in the challenges that we're putting at the kids. It's like a video game, but it's still more fun and gives me a challenge to do. This is just a nice way to add in coding in a fun competition way that all students were able to participate in. Just because it helps me understand more about coding my own robot. It was really awesome. It's friends working together, coding an actual robot. It is a lot of fun. The Cyber Robotics Coding Competition is an online competition where students from all over the world explore the world of STEM in a fun and exciting way using 3D virtual robots. CRCC uses a gamified, level-based approach to keep students engaged. The competition is easy to implement and flexible. All you need to get started is a computer and a browser. During the six to eight week program, students are immersed in STEM and computer science as they learn to program robots and take part in fun and exciting mission simulations. The competitive and friendly environment helps develop 21st century skills such as problem solving, computational thinking, communication, collaboration, and teamwork. The inclusive and equitable nature of CRCC breaks down diversity and gender barriers Nearly half of the competitors are girls. More than one-third of participating schools are rural, and in 2018, 38% of competitors were from schools without computer science classes. CRCC is easy and fun for teachers as well. The program needs no special training, hardware, or software, and includes instructions so teachers with or without STEM experience can mentor a CRCC team. During the first season alone, over 100,000 students across the globe enjoyed this exciting tournament and were given access to the amazing world of STEM. Shift your school's approach to STEM. Join the upcoming season of the Cyber Robotics Coding Competition today.